Welcome back. This is part two of our two-part series on how to create word art using Inkscape. The first part we dealt with some of the basic techniques and the basic concepts. Uh, this, uh, this video will cover a little bit more in-depth uh, techniques. Uh, a little bit more difficult, but they have a lot more flexibility and you should be able to create some really nice word art. So let's jump in and get started. Now the next way we're going to do it is by breaking it apart and we kind of covered this a little bit in the previous one where we tried to weld together all those letters. Uh, the concept is still pretty much the same. I'm going to go ahead and grab my text tool and I'm going to type in a new name, Dalton, and then I'm going to select that name and I'm going to make those two inch letters. I'm going to change the font by clicking the T and this time I'm going to be using Cabled Comic and then click apply and then close that window. So instead of kerning this time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break these apart into individual letters. So the very first thing I'm going to do is come up to path, object to path and that uh, turns it from a font into, into, uh, into a, an object uh, so I can no longer edit this as, a, uh, as lettering anymore. It is now an object. It doesn't look like it's broken apart because it is currently grouped and treated as one object even though they are multiple objects and in order to break those apart or ungroup those I'm going to come up here to object ungroup. Now I have control over each one of these letters individually. Now we could get a little bit more creative and just use our mouse and move them over any which way we'd like. And this is a great opportunity to get kind of creative about how you like your letters to look. Uh, let's say this one wants to be a shelf sitter, something that needs to sit uh, evenly and level on a shelf. In order to do that, I'm going to pull down a ruler from the uh, ruler up here. It's just click and drag, and I'm just going to have a little guideline. And that means now I can nudge this up so it sits nicely on that guideline. And the T, let's bring that up just a tish just so that fits nicely on the guideline. So now the support areas for the shelf sitter would be on the D, the T, and the N. And this uh, opens up a whole lot of different uh, creative possibilities because you could position the letters in different areas. In fact, we could take this D and make it taller. And um, I don't know, maybe the T, we might want to rotate it a little bit. You could do uh, all kinds of fun stuff with that. So really the, uh, the possibilities are really limitless on this. Uh, so I like the way that looks. So what we're going to do is weld those together. So I'm going to select everything. I'm going to make them gray so I could see them a little bit better and then make a black outline like I've done before. And these are individual objects. I want them as one object. So all I'm going to do is come up here to path and click Union and now it's one giant object uh, which I could print out and cut pretty easily. The last technique is going to be a little bit more complicated. It's going to be taking elements of breaking apart like we did in the previous example and we're also going to delve into note editing a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my text tool. I'm going to type in a name. Uh, in this case it's going to be Gavin and I'm going to select the name and then make a uh, make these two inches tall. You know, in fact, let's make these four inches tall. We're going to get a little bit crazy on this one. And then let's change our font and we're going to change this one to a font called Curly Joe. And click apply and then close close that up. And now that you can kind of see it's more of a script style. We're going to have to break each one of these letters up into individual letters or individual objects so that we can move them around with a mouse. So I'm going to come up here to path, object to path. Each individual letter is its own object, but they're currently grouped. So we got to ungroup it. So I'm going to come up to object, ungroup, and now they're individual objects in which I can move around individually. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit and then uh, what we're going to do is start positioning these letters. I'm going to take the A, I'm going to just go ahead and make sure it touches the G here. And then the V, we could kind of maybe tuck in 
like right here. And maybe we'll make that be a little bit longer so, and maybe a little bit more narrow so that I'd like to have the bottom part of the V touch the bottom part of the A as well as the top part of the V touch the top part of the A. And I might, maybe I'll rotate that just a tish. And I think something like that looks pretty nice. The eye, I'm going to bring in like here. And that touches really nice. Uh, and then finally the N, I'm going to have hang off of the eye right here. And I'm going to overlap that just a little bit. Now one of the problem areas here is the eye in Gavin. Because it has this little floating dot. We're going to have to make sure that that is connected somehow. So I'm going to select the uh, eye which is an object, remember. And what we're going to have to do is break this apart. So I'm going to select the eye, come up to Path, Break Apart, and now you can see it broke it into two individual objects. So I have the dot as well as the cursive eye. So I'm going to move the dot so that it actually touches a little bit. And now we're going to kind of get into node editing. So I'm going to zoom into this eye. And I kind of want the eye to be a little bit more rounded, but still have that nice bridge. I'm going to select the dot, come over here to the node editor. And now I'm going to just start moving some of these nodes so that they look nice. And we're just trying to round these so that it looks more like a dot as opposed to a slash. That way the bridge doesn't get confused with the rest of the uh, with the rest of the dot. And I think something like that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll pull this up a little bit. And I might actually rotate that just a tish so it would look something like that. And then I'm going to fix this here. I'm just going to delete that node and I think that looks just fine. I'm also going to, just for a little bit of extra flair, I'm going to bring this end, this, uh, this little hook down here. I'm going to drag that down a little bit. So I'm going to select the end, and you can kind of see all the nodes that are part of that end. And I'm going to just do a marquee of the different nodes here. Let's make sure we don't get the ones that we don't need here. And I got those pretty good. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to just use my down arrow key to drag that end down. Now this area right here is going to be super straight. And it doesn't really fit with the style of the lettering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of these uh, nodes and then just start splitting the difference. Just kind of moving them up. I'm just using my arrow key. And that way it kind of gives a little bit of variation so that it's not so obvious that you patched it together. And I think something like that will work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and select the all the letters. I'm going to select a gray letter with a black outline. And these are individual objects. So what I'm going to do is come up here to Path uh, Union. And it creates one object. and um, uh, now we could easily print that out. Now I see a couple of problem areas that's going to be kind of difficult to cut. Right here is a very sharp point. I'm going to come up over here into the node editor again. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete that point And bring that in a bit. Um, I think I saw another one up here. Maybe on this point here. You know, I think we could probably, well, let's, let's delete that and we'll soften up that point a little bit because that'll probably get broken. This little A here that has like a little loop, uh, that's probably going to be a little bit difficult to cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all those nodes and I'm just going to delete that all together and get rid of that little hole. I mean, we don't need to jump in there and cut that s small little hole. Uh, we got some more sharp points here. Maybe we could delete a couple of these. Um, I don't think it's bad having points, so uh, maybe we'll just leave two points in there instead of uh, how ma however many were in there. And I think something like that looks pretty good. Now this kind of goes to show you exactly how a font choice can make or break a design. I think a, maybe a different font choice probably would have been better in this particular design. 
So there you have it, the basics of creating word art using Inkscape. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you felt a little bit lost, that's alright. You could check out my other class on using Inkscape to create scroll saw patterns. Uh, we go into a lot more in-depth uh, tutorial on how to use the various tools. So if you felt a little lost, uh, go ahead and check out that series as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I invite you to swing over to my blog over at scrollsawgoodies.com and you can also join the discussion over at scrollsawvillage.com which is a community of scrollsaw enthusiasts. So I hope to see you over there. Until next time, happy scrolling.